All right, so we're going to look at the variables grid and how to use the variables grid. A variables grid is just a graphic organizer that's used to organize the variables rather than just putting them in a list. Kids often work better when there's a, a graphic organizer to organize your information as opposed to just straight list and, and reading text, which makes it a little bit harder for them. So what we're going to look at as, for an example of the variables grid is a parachuter. Um, so in this case, we're just going to be looking at uh, using, uh, in, uh, emulating a, uh, a parachuter that's falling down uh, to ground. And we're going to look at some of the variables that are involved in parachuting. So my research question, if we start off with that, is uh, can a parachuter be altered? Uh, can a uh, parachuter's uh, speed of descent uh, be altered um, at all, I guess, be altered. Uh, and the, the aim that we're going to use for this, uh, so the aim is going to be to investigate uh, if there is a relationship between how fast a parachuter falls and the size of the hole. So there's many variables that we could use, but we're going to look at the size of the hole. Um, parachutes often have a hole in the top of the parachute. That hole uh, helps airflow so that it doesn't, uh, so the parachute doesn't wobble too much and the parachute can descend, uh, descend straight down. So the aim for this one um, to investigate, remember we always start an aim with to investigate, to determine, to see if, um, so sort of that sort of language, uh, if there is a relationship between Uh, between yep, the speed of descent and the size of the hole in the chute. All right, so once we've got the, uh, once we're at that point there where we've got a research question, and we've got an aim to start looking at investigating, we then need to draw up our variables grid now. Normally, like I said, we go and just draw a list and we say we put a heading uh, variables or something like that, and then we're just going to write all the variables down there in a list, you know, one, two, three, four, or a dot point or some form like that. Uh, with the graphic organizer, uh, what we're going to do this time, and I always make sure that the kids do at least a lots and crosses size grid, so there's nine squares in there, and I always get them to organize it in this one particular way, where I write the aim in here, always write the independent variable up there and the dependent variable down there. Now, you don't have to do that, but it's just, again, it's one of those explicit teaching techniques where if you do the same thing over and over and over every single time, uh, the familiarity with the, uh, the process, um, that automaticity of the process allows them then to concentrate on the, on the content that you're trying to deliver instead. Um, so in this case, I'd rewrite the aim in here, and I'm going to put, I'm just going to abbreviate to investigate um, shoot hole size. Now, I wouldn't accept that from a student. I'd actually expect them to write the whole aim in there. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to write an abbreviation of the aim. Um, the independent variable, in this case here, the independent variable is the size of the hole. So does that hole size, the diameter of that hole, or the, um, the, the square centimetre area of that hole, does that make a difference in terms of its descent, uh, rate of descent? So up here, my independent variable is going to be the hole size. And my dependent variable is going to be uh, measured in, uh, is going to be the measurement of what I'm actually trying to measure to determine if the whole size makes a difference. And in this case, that's going to be um, the, the time, the time of the, des of the descent, the time of the descent. And we'll probably measure that in seconds. Um, some of the other things that we might look at in terms of variables, you could, I guess, look at the, the, the number of strings. Um, number of strings and when we talk about the number of strings we just talk about this over here how many strings are actually coming down does that make a difference um, well i don't know uh, i could put in here the, the the color of our little army man that we're going to use 
sometimes you get to a point though where those sort of variables are going to make a difference. So you, while in you know in junior in prep um, and things like that, you might actually accept variables like colour. Uh, I'd, I'd discourage that, and I'd be putting in things that are that are more likely. I mean, if I go and eat wheat bix for breakfast, that's unlikely to be a variable that actually affects the outcome of this experiment, as is the colour of the army man. But um, certainly, like I said, in the initial stages, like in prep, then I would accept colour, um, but I'd probably dissuade them from using that. Um, so number of strings. Certainly, though, the, the mass of the army man, um, that might be another variable that we could use. Uh, we, we know that falling objects, it shouldn't matter on the mass. Um, it shouldn't affect the rate of descent. But in this case here, uh, the, the mass might, because of the terminal velocity, you know, the, the concept of terminal velocity. So mass might make a difference. Um, another thing that could, uh, would, would likely affect the time of descent, because we're measuring the time, remember, is um, the initial uh, drop So how high we initially drop that army man from, surely that would affect the, um, the time measured for the descent. Um, and what about the, uh, what about if we look at something like weather conditions? We can look at weather conditions. Um, if it's windy, um, if it's raining, which it tends to do a lot in Tully, um, those sort of things may affect the drop uh, time, the time for descent. Um, another one is the mass. And another one is the um, initial drop velocity. So um, whether we just let it go, um, you know, let it go, or whether we actually throw it downwards, th that could very uh, possibly affect the, uh, the time of descent. And the last one that I've got here is um, the time for the chute to open. for the chute to open would it be another uh, factor if I drop that army man and it doesn't open the, the chute doesn't open until it's nearly at the ground well it's free falling all that way whereas if it opens right at the start then obviously that's going to affect the time of descent now you can just leave it like that and certainly in primary school that's where I would be leaving it uh, in the lower primary school and as you get to sort of grade five and grade six I guess uh, maybe earlier uh, but certainly in high school I'd be looking at getting each one of these and writing in here how you are actually going to control each of those variables. And so this is the next step of the, of the variable grid, variables grid that actually value adds. Um, so the number of strings, what we're going to do in here, so we might do some research and we might find out that you could have anywhere between, I don't know, say four strings and 12 strings or, or whatever. And as a student, you might decide, well, you're going to pick six strings. Let's go sort of somewhere between six or eight strings. But in this case, I'm going to pick six strings. So I'm going to use six strings and not only am I going to use six strings but those six strings are going to be attached in the shape of a pentagram uh, sorry a, a hexagon I'm not going to go and attach them uh, where I've got three on one side and three on the other I'm going to distribute them evenly around my parachute use six strings in the shape of a hexagon for attachment Um, when I look at something like the whole size uh, for the independent variable. So when I'm looking at the whole size, I'm going to be saying, oh, I'm going to actually go and stipulate right at the very outset what size holes I'm going to use. So I might put it here, um, whole size. We might go vary the whole, the whole size uh, to uh, one centimetre squared, uh, three centimetres squared, uh, eight centimetres squared, uh, and we should be doing in, in junior again, uh, in primary school, then maybe three iterations of, of your independent variable is enough. Pardon me, with the new uh, senior QCAA syllabus uh, in science, syllabus in science, we need to look at five iterations of the independent variable. So in this case, let's go another couple. Let's put, um, I don't know, 10 centimetres squared and, I don't know, lucky 13 centimetres squared. 
are the weather conditions, we're going to make sure that uh, we do it inside. So uh, we might go to the, the tallest place in our school is inside of our multi-purpose centre and we're going to drop it inside so that we have no effect of those weather conditions like wind or rain. Um, so weather conditions we're going to put uh, conduct experiment inside of MPC, multi-purpose centre. Um, if you can't control that, then what I often do at the end is I'll go and put things like this, uh, E for error, or if it's not an error, um, we might put U for uncontrolled. And they're the things that later on we come into our discussion. We look at those and we say, well, suggested improvements um, might be we look at anything that's got a U or an E beside it, and they're the things we need to modify. Uh, let's look at the mass of the army man. So we're going to use uh, army man uh, weighs or has a mass of, uh, I'm just guessing, I don't know what they weigh, but let's say five grams, whatever it is. Um, you could certainly measure it, and then you put that into your variables grid and say, well, that's exactly the mass that we're going to use, it would be 3.9 grams. Um, and that way that experiment can be replicated exactly. The initial drop height, uh, drop from 3.5 metres. Um, we're going to drop it from 3.5 metres. Uh, measured with a, with a tape measure, uh, just for accuracy. Uh, the time for the shoot to open the initial drop velocity. So in the initial drop velocity, uh, what did I write down here? Uh, um, in this case, we're going to just ensure the parachuter is not throwing downwards um, and is dropped or released. Uh, we couldn't even put in there dropped or released passively. Dropped or released passively. Um, let's look at the time for the shoot to open and in this case what we're going to do is we're going to have a second person holding the chute open when dropped um, or uh, and so the kids could then choose from this but certainly uh, I'm going to put down a couple of options or you could um, or fold Fold the chute the same way each time. Um, it might be that you fold it, you know, left over right over left over right, and fold four times, and each time you do it exactly the same way. So when you drop it, uh, as it falls, it takes us, well, theoretically, the same amount of time for it to unfold and the chute to open. Uh, the dependent variable, which is a time of descent, uh, we're going to measure. In this one, we're going to use a stopwatch and to try and eliminate variables a little bit. Uh, Three different people uh, measure the time and an average is taken to oops, improve um, precision. Uh, so my variables grid is now complete, but I might come up with more variables, and and, and I guess this is one of the problems of the uh, the variables grid is that they get to this stage and they go, oh, it's full, and that's it. I don't need to do any more. Uh, when in fact, if there's more variables, you do need to put them in there. So my suggestion to kids is always yeah, that's a good starting point. But if you do need more variables, then certainly just extend your table out, and you can go and put more variables in your variables grid wherever you need and as required. Um, and that's a graphic organiser for the variables grid.